G'day ice cream lovers, again we're going to throw together a pumpkin pie, let's do a pumpkin pie uh, frozen custard. Now to tell you the truth I'm not a big fan of pumpkin, in fact in Australia most pumpkins are just made for roasting and eating for Christmas dinner, but I'm always a big supporter of tasting whatever goes in. A can of Libby's pumpkin puree, um, always have some taster spoons close by so you can taste the product that uh, is going in. I enjoy this almost as much as I enjoy avocado <laughs> because this added to this 12% frozen custard base is going to make an absolute treat I guarantee you, even for those pumpkin haters out there of which I am numbered among you. So we're going to put that down here. We're going to start off with, as again, a 12% frozen custard base. Depending on the kind of vanilla that you are, you know, accustomed to, why don't you move out of your box a little bit? Today we're actually going to put in a Mexican blend, a pure vanilla extract from our good friends at Lockhead Vanilla. Uh, again, Mexican will give it just that. I say spicy note, but it's not spicy like a churro or spicy like a taco. It just gives it a nice little mature spice to it. Next. We're going to put in one whole can of Libby's pumpkin puree. Now it's really important that when you go down the grocery store, and again I'm not a really big supporter of going down and getting everything for ice cream ingredients to put into your ice cream from the grocery store because a lot of them aren't concentrated enough, but there's two types of pumpkin. There's pumpkin puree and there's pumpkin pie filling. You want to get the pumpkin puree, 100% puree Libby's pumpkin. You can get any brand, I find that this works the best. So we're going to take this fella out. Again, drop it straight into the mix. I've still got that taste of pumpkin in my mouth. I tell you, it almost makes me want to... I won't say it because I might get a sponsorship from Libby's one day. And we'll get ourselves a whisk. Okay. Now, you could use an... going crazy on the old uh, GoPro over here. Sorry. <laughs> There's not an earthquake happening in St. Louis here. It's just me stirring up this pumpkin frozen custard. Now before we throw that in the custard machine, one last ingredient that I think is extremely important. It's one whole container of pumpkin pie spice. Now this stuff is pretty potent, so you might say, oh Steve, I don't know about that. That's a lot of pumpkin pie spice to put in one container. I'm telling you right now, it's not. And you can see that it actually gives a, a, a nice little speck to it as well. It's a pretty easy process. You're using the sweetness and the fat of the mix to dissipate the pumpkin and then you've got the vanilla to kind of lift the dairy notes and the pumpkin pie spice just to give a little bit of kick. So I'm looking forward to see how this comes out. We're going to pop over to our custom machine, go crazy. Okay, so a quick change of plans here. I've decided to move over to a batch freezer only because this ice cream is actually going to a church group and uh, they eat a lot of ice cream. So I'm thinking that I need a little bit more overrun and this batch freezer is going to give this custard a little bit more overrun, a little bit more air, a bit more volume, because I think that's what they're going to want. They're going to eat me out of house and home and I think frozen custard, as rich and decadent as it is, I kind of want this to go a little further if you know what I mean. I'm going to take my pumpkin pie frozen custard base and again, you might think we're doing something a little unorthodox by putting a frozen custard mix into a batch freezer. You'd think, well, wouldn't you put it in a frozen custard machine? And normally you would. But the frozen custard is actually going to kind of churn and freeze down the same as a premium ice cream, except a premium ice cream is generally about 14 to 16% fat. This frozen custard's 12. I don't think you're going to see too much difference. Anyway, let's turn it down and uh, see what happens. So what we're putting as a variegate in is just one packet of this honey made uh, graham cracker I guess, made with real honey. The reason why we're using the honey made and not a pumpkin pie shell is pretty simple. This uh, product here, the actual graham cracker itself, is going to absorb a little of the moisture of the ice cream both as it freezes and as it kind of tempers up in the case and it's going to absorb that and give the consistency and the look and the mouthfeel of a pumpkin pie crust. I could cut up a pumpkin pie crust and put it through as a variegate. The problem there is that it's more expensive and secondly when it absorbs moisture it'll kind of almost become like mush. 
Now the beauty of this machine is I can actually see down in it and see how it's churning. Now most times I'd do a spatula test where we'd basically check to see whether it holds on the spatula, but I can kind of see that this is kind of uh, freezing down relatively well. If I lift the lid and it stays somewhat upright, then I think we're good. Again, before I extract out, it's always good to taste. And wouldn't you know it, that despicable pumpkin puree has turned, almost like a very ugly caterpillar, has turned into a beautiful butterfly of ice cream. Okay, the time has come. I've had this bucket in my freezer. It's nice and cold, so I'm not gonna get heat shock. I've also had my graham cracker pieces in the freezer as well. Now, again, what I'm trying to do here, every inch or so, I'm gonna stop the extraction and put my graham crackers in. So hit my extract button, open up my bucket, rotate it around. I prefer a firmer product than most, so I'm gonna stop it right there. Break that off. I'm going about an inch in the bottom of the bucket and then my graham cracker pieces. Just enough so that most customers are going to get themselves a little piece of graham cracker in their ice cream. I don't mind saying, ice cream lovers, that looks pretty awesome. Do a crust on the top. Oh, yes. Let's go and box this up. Well, ice cream lovers, there you have it. Pumpkin pie ice cream. Absolutely wonderful. We'll just peel this off. It's firmed up a little bit. Firm enough for us to give it a bit of a scoop. And again, you could put another variegate through this, you could probably put a caramel, but I think it's good just as it is. We'll take our cone, nice round scoop, push down, squeeze up. Another one here, still a bit soft as you can see, but that's what we're left with. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. I'll tell you another thing too, it doesn't taste too bad. Mm. Not my favorite, but certainly a lot better than pumpkin pie puree out of the can. We'll post all the ingredients and the links to this recipe. Thanks for tuning in, folks, and we'll see you in the next episode.